So children under five at risk from only consuming plant milk. I mean, I think anyone would be at risk if they're only consuming plant milk. Obviously, that's not what they mean, but kind of a stupid title. Children under five drinking plant milk in place of cow's milk are at risk. The experts they are referring to are the Scientific Advisory Committee on Nutrition and the Committee on Toxicity of Chemicals in Food, Consumer Products, and the Environment. They collaborated on this benefit risk assessment for the UK government, assessment of the health benefits and risks of consuming plant-based drinks. Specifically, they compared the top five most um, popular in terms of sales, most popular plant-based milks in the UK, almond, oat, and and soy with cow's milk. And they looked at various nutrients, calories, fiber, saturated fat, sugar, protein, vitamin A, riboflavin, folate, B12, vitamin D, iron, calcium, magnesium, potassium, iodine, and zinc. And they also looked at potential toxins like PCBs, isoflavones. Yeah, and it's interesting. We'll get to that. Now, they do point out that cow's milk is not an essential food for anyone, including children, and that what's important is whatever food is replacing the cow's milk is similar in terms of nutrition, which I think virtually everyone would agree with, right? If a kid is getting a lot of their calcium from cow's milk and then their parents replace it with an oat milk that isn't fortified with calcium, so has virtually no calcium, that's bad. Like unless other calcium rich foods are incorporated into the diet, the kid is going to be at risk for calcium deficiency, for poor bone health. Unsurprisingly, the authors do not recommend unfortified plant milks. I was gonna say less unsurprisingly. <laughs> Surprisingly, the authors do not recommend your typical fortified plant milks either. And before we get into it, I should say we are specifically talking about kids one to five, not under one, right, which largely are going to have breast milk formula, no milk, cow's milk, or otherwise. Let's start with the obvious ones. We have calories. There are generally fewer calories in plant milks than in, you know, your cow's milks. Probably a good thing considering the obesity crisis in the Western world. More than a quarter of UK kids are overweight. Saturated fat, almond, oat, soy, they are all going to have fewer grams of saturated fat than cow's milk. Probably a good thing considering atherosclerosis starts in childhood. And fiber, duh, plant milks have fiber, cow's milk does not, considering most kids don't get enough fiber. Probably a good thing. Vitamin B12, vitamin D, and calcium, these are harder to get from plants. Fortunately, a lot of plant milks are fortified with them. If a plant milk has fortification, it probably has these three. Not always though, it's really important to check the label. Protein, this is one I have talked about a lot. Soy has about the same amount of protein per cup as cow's milk, but many of the other plant milks, most of the other plant milks, do not. They have much less. As the authors say, this is not a big deal for omnivorous kids, right? For most kids who are eating so much protein, but it could be an issue for vegan kids depending on what else they're eating. Riboflavin or B2. Plant milks don't have as much as cow's milk, but typically they are fortified with it. Plus all plants do have some, usually in like small to moderate amounts. There are some really good sources like almonds. I think it would be pretty hard not to get enough riboflavin on a vegan diet. Similarly for folate, right? Folate is actually higher in cow's milk. That surprised me. Soy has similar amounts, but yeah, plants. I think it's virtually impossible to not get enough folate on a plant-rich diet. Vitamin A, cow's milk has a good amount of vitamin A, at least whole cow's milk. Well, usually the reduced fat does as well, but they fortify it, right? Because vitamin A is fat soluble. You remove the fat, you're gonna remove a good amount of the vitamin A. Since most kids in the Western world do not eat a whole lot of orange fruits and vegetables or dark leafy greens, cow's milk is a really important source of vitamin A. Plant milks are not a good source, and unfortunately in the UK, they don't typically supplement for it. Here in the US, it's very common. I think virtually all of the plant milks contain vitamin A palmitate. I know the silk soy milk that we use does. Also the Kroger House brand, the Simple Truth brand has it. But as I already alluded to, like carrots, kale. Unlike B12, D, iodine, this is a really easy nutrient to find in the plant world. You could argue that, well, most kids aren't eating these, so getting rid of cow's milk, replacing it with a plant milk that doesn't, isn't fortified with vitamin A could be a problem. And like true, but I, I don't know, I think the government should also be pushing kids to eat those foods, you know? <laughs> to eat more fruits and vegetables, especially given the obesity, diabetes, heart disease crisis, right? This is linked to lack of fruits and vegetables, too many drinkable calories, which cow's milk 
absolutely is. It's kind of like saying, hey, kids get a lot of their vitamin C from fruit snacks. So we shouldn't tell parents the truth that fruit snacks are candy because then kids might not get enough vitamin C. Okay, fine. But like fruits and vegetables, <laughs> we, we gotta find a way to get kids to eat more fruits and vegetables. Iodine is another one I've talked about a lot. Cow's milk is a really important source for kids. And unfortunately, plant milks almost always are not fortified. They're never, they're virtually never fortified with it. And there are few natural plant sources. I would love for plant milk companies to add iodine to their products. Until then, we give our kids a multi that contains iodine. We also use iodized salt. And my two younger kids love dried nori. Potassium and magnesium, these are slightly higher in cow's milk, but again, these are two that are pretty abundant in the plant world. Zinc is less abundant in the plant milks they analyzed, especially almond milk. Not a concern for omnivorous kids, but vegans, it could be concerning. I actually have a whole video on zinc and veganism. Check it out. Sugar. This one I'm gonna spend a little more time on. It's pretty goofy to me. They're super concerned about the free sugar, the added sugar in a lot of plant milks because it is added to the product as opposed to like natural lactose in milk. Irrespective of the free sugar's content, plant-based drinks may not have the same protective effects against dental caries offered by casein, calcium, and phosphate that is present in cow's milk. To be clear, this study they're referencing here has nothing to do with plant milks. They are only talking about cow's milk and the components of cow's milk milk that could benefit teeth. Just wanted to make that clear because reading that you could, you know, be led to believe that the study is actually showing that plant milks like aren't as good for teeth. No. Regardless, the main cause of tooth decay is having food on the teeth for prolonged periods of time, especially sugar and poor dental hygiene. This is why giving babies bottles of milk, of cow's milk at bedtime is a problem. Prolonged oral exposure to sugar, natural lactose, or added sugar is bad for our teeth. And the fact that most of the sweetened plant milks have significantly less sugar than cow's milk, I don't know, I think that's kind of a positive. Just an anecdote, but my three kids, eight, six, and three, I had to think about that for a minute, none of them have had cavities and they drink added sugar soy milk every day. I, on the other hand, had my first cavity by kindergarten and I drink cow's milk. And it probably has nothing to do with the milks and everything to do with dental hygiene. My mom brushed our teeth, but flossing kids' teeth was just not a thing back then. I brush my kids' teeth twice a day and floss once a day every night. Even my eight-year-old, I still brush their teeth once a day. They brush their teeth the other time just because I'm I'm not convinced they're doing like a great job. I don't think I was at that age. Point is, I would be concerned about sugar on the teeth all day, regardless of the source, right? Cow's milk, plant milk, added sugar, juice, like it puts kids' teeth at risk, especially again, when coupled with poor dental hygiene. One more thing before I get to the toxins, they do mention briefly ultra processed that most plant milks would fall into the ultra processed category if we're looking at the Nova classification system. I have a whole video talking about this system and ultra processed foods. Briefly, remember 100% whole wheat sliced bread is ultra processed. It's in the same category as Oreos. I think looking at nutrient density is a far better predictor of the healthfulness of a food. And finally, toxicological concerns. There's basically just one isoflavones. Soy and or isoflavones have been reported to have both beneficial and adverse effects in a variety of human studies. However, the findings have yet to be included in formal recommendations made by regulatory authorities. As such, any potential beneficial or adverse effects in certain populations have been noted, but not considered further. Reading this, it, it kind of sounds like the evidence points equally right, to like risks and benefits of soy and or isoflavones. Some studies find adverse effects. Some studies find benefits. In truth, the overwhelming majority of studies, and soy has been studied a lot, find benefits, and the few that have found adverse effects have not been substantiated. Like gynecomastia or man boobs, right? We have case reports of men drinking like insane amounts of soy milk because that's something only a man would do. <laughs> I'm gonna go vegan and I don't wanna cook and I need protein. 
I'll just chug soy milk. <laughs> Point is, actual studies have found no link. Whereas again, the benefits of soy have been shown over and over again. And we can see this with the studies they mention when talking about the risks. They mention endocrine effects and also um, affecting thyroid medication absorption. So the endocrine effects of soy, as they say, are based on animal studies. What they don't say is that a lot of human studies have been conducted and they do not suggest soy is an endocrine disruptor. So make of that what you will. Long-term evaluations of children fed soy protein formulas have shown no evidence of estrogen-like hormonal effects. Bone metabolism markers remain within normal ranges and there are no signs of precocious puberty or gynecomastia in children consuming soy-based diets. Although infants fed soy formulas present higher levels of isoflavones than those fed cow milk formula or breast milk, these concentrations do not correlate with hormonal changes indicating minimal biological impact. And then thyroid medication, this is obviously only a concern for a select population, right? Those on thyroid medication. And then the benefits, which again, they mentioned briefly, reduced cancer risk and also alleviation of menopause symptoms, both of which have been found in several studies. And the authors make no mention of numerous other studies on the benefits of soy, including for children. It's clear to me, at least, that the benefits of soy outweigh the risks. Soy is clearly a healthy food, certainly healthier than cow's milk when we take into account, again, calories, saturated fat, fiber. You know what are huge concerns for children in the UK right now? Saturated fat, calories, and fiber. And I find the like regulatory authorities have made no formal recommendations regarding soy consumption, so we're just not going to consider it. That's kind of weird, right? The European Food Safety Authority has deemed isoflavone safe. The Canadian government recommends soy as part of its uh, dietary guidelines. The U.S. government considers soy a healthy protein, a healthy vegetable, and a healthy dairy alternative when it's fortified with calcium. And returning to the U.K., we have the British Dietetic Association. They say soy is full of nutrients. In fact, they now recommend a plant-forward diet emphasizing plant protein over animal protein. And we haven't even considered the other effects of dairy, right, for the environment, for the animals. Cow's milk is significantly worse for the planet than soy on every metric. To me, this reeks of like, we've been doing this for so long, it must be good. <laughs> It can't be wrong. There can't be something better. We've been drinking cow's milk, giving it to our children for so long. Like, how could we do something else? The suggestion that a plant milk, an ultra processed food could be better than natural cow's milk, it just seems ludicrous. But obviously just because we've been doing it forever doesn't mean it's right, doesn't mean it's the best option for the animals, for the planet, or for ourselves. Anyway, I highly recommend this short article debunking the myth, are soy isoflavones truly a public health concern? It's a response to a recent ridiculous French report also about children and isoflavones. It only considered the potential risks of soy and ultimately concluded in a recommendation to ban soy from schools. Soy foods remain a safe and valuable component of human diets when consumed responsibly, a conclusion supported by decades of research across diverse populations. Rather than focusing solely on potential risks, public health policy should also recognize and embrace the well-established benefits of soy consumption in the context of overall dietary quality and sustainability. And the authors do very briefly mention ethical concerns and environmental concerns, and they say it's outside the scope of this paper, which, fine, but as... I think Jenny Messina has said, like, you you can't call a diet good, you know, or a recommendation, a food recommendation good if it is bad for the planet. Whether you care about animals or not, climate change is such a pressing issue right now. Like, we should not even be considering foods that are significantly worse for the planet. So in conclusion, and as I noted earlier, the authors do not recommend typical plant milks for children one to five, specifically because while they are fortified, they're not fortified with everything the authors think they should be fortified with, no iodine, no vitamin A, and they contain added sugar. And I actually really like what they did here with their recommendations. They broke them up based on diet. So here they have the recommendation for the general population for most kids who eat animal products. And then here they have for vegan kids. I really appreciate them not just saying no kids should have this because we think cow's milk is preferable. That's it. Bye. <laughs> Instead, they're like, okay, we recognize there are vegan kids. Here's the recommendations for the vegan kids. I don't know. That's nice. 
Anyway, they say cow's milk is preferable, but fortified unsweetened plant milks are an acceptable alternative. And then for vegan kids, they say specifically soy milk, fortified and unsweetened soy milk is preferable given the protein content. Now, when I say fortified, again, I mean fully fortified based on their recommendations. So B12, D, calcium, iodine, vitamin A, riboflavin. Since none of the milks they looked at had all of these, none of them are recommended as a fortified option as a replacement for cow's milk. So as frustrating as I found the whole sugar discussion and the isoflavones discussion in particular, I do understand where they're coming from, at least with iodine. Like a large number of kids would not get enough iodine if their parents switched them from cow's milk to a fortified plant milk because they just don't contain iodine. I think they said a few did in the UK. I've never seen one here in the US. And I've been saying this for years. Like it's really, really important that Silk and other brands start fortifying their plant milks with iodine. Even still, iodine supplements do exist. Lots of children's multis contain it. A lot more kids are eating seaweed now too. That's cool. But for me personally, a report like this it changes nothing. As I said, we already supplement for iodine in other ways. We definitely are not switching to cow's milk because of iodine. For the animals, of course, for the environment, but also for our own health, right? Less saturated fat, fiber, uh, isoflavones, like they're good for us. But it is important to talk about the downsides of plant milks and any vegan food. Like we want people going vegan or even having been vegan for a long time to be aware of the potential pitfalls, especially when people are trying to raise their kids vegan. Anyway, I would love to know your thoughts on this, um, you know, especially if you have kids that you feed vegan or vegetarian or just, you know, plant forward diet, and maybe you do have them on some sort of plant milk. Were you aware of the potential risks, like especially iodine? I actually have a whole video about it, but it's been a number of years. God, how many years has it been since I made that? I think we were still in the apartment. Anyway, please share your thoughts. And of course, like and subscribe. And thank you so much to all of my members here on YouTube and my patrons at patreon.com slash unnatural vegan. And I do post two exclusive videos a month for tier two members and patrons. I do a vlog and then I also do a controversial topic. So last month, what was last month? Usually it doesn't have anything to do with veganism, which is why I just posted on Patreon. This one actually did. Uh, yeah, that's it for me, guys. New video soon. I am changing the wall. It's kind of a, it's kind of getting a little sad, a little floppy. And there's so much stuff from the kids that they want me to put up here. I have an insane pile that they add to pretty much every day. Um, yeah, it's a whole thing that I keep putting off because it's a whole thing. It actually won't even take that long, but I mean, it might, cause I'm gonna have to decide. I can't put everything on the wall. I'm kind of stressed about it. <laughs> and I know it's been a long time since I've recorded in my usual spot. It's just so much easier to record here. I will still record over there and I actually have some clay figures and stuff that they've made for me that I need to set up, which I have to set up every single time because <laughs> my clothes actually go behind me. That's where they hang, my shirts and dresses and stuff. So I have to move all of that and then set everything up on the shelf. So it's, it's I, again, it's not a big deal. It's really not. It takes like five minutes. Yeah, so I have some clay things from them that I need to set up. So that'll be fun. But yeah, it's just so much easier to record in here. And I have been just incredibly incredibly lazy. But yeah, look forward to some updated stuff and some really cool stuff because this is all like what a year, two years old maybe. So um, yeah, get excited for my kids artwork. I don't know. I'm excited. <laughs> I really love when I see a comment that's like, oh my god, I love the artwork behind you. It's like, yeah, me too. <laughs>